Welcome to Time Vault. I'm ELD here with my top 10 popper cards that have been downshifted from Double Masters. I'm going to start with a couple of notable mentions, honorable mentions. Surge Node, I don't expect to make any type of constructed splash. However, it is the type of thing that players will have fun tinkering around with. One mana and only one to use its activated ability is not much of an investment on that side. It really is a question of the card itself pulling the weight. Uh, it doesn't replace itself, so I suspect people will mostly just have fun trying. I'll be super surprised if this ends up breaking anything, but it also has the potential in the future if charge counters somehow end up having a massive impact. Kazool's Toll Collector, another similar card. Its future impact, kind of a major reason for its inclusion as a mention here. The three power creature for three isn't embarrassing stats not particularly exciting for poppers we do have some very under costed threats however that zero to cheat equip cost is what it's all about i'm looking at you colossal hammer that eight equip cost would love to get reduced down to zero he is looking to pick that up and smash some face and if they ever downshift that or if we get any equipment that he is just really good at picking up it could be a interesting card in the future though right now i don't think there's any equipment quite exciting enough to run him bottom of the list here didn't sweat too much the rank order these are all cards that i think might be playable uh, but are not immediately just obvious all-stars orcish vandal being able to sacrifice an artifact to do two damage to any target very likely that this could be a good answer for certain strategies against cards like Muldrifter and delver of secrets the timing with this guy on the table gets super complicated as he can just hang out and shoot things down at his leisure and of course if you're sacrificing artifacts that draw cards when they are going to the graveyard it's just an all-around great value so I'm not exactly sure where he might fight in, fit in. Maybe some type of red-white aggro artifact strategy. Sideboard, perhaps he'll be a card that can see play in sideboards of an ATOG strategy. But taking down opposing creatures is pretty powerful. If you're going face, I mean, he's not nearly as exciting. Two-mana creature to just do two to the face is basically equivalent of attacking each round. But pinging those pesky creatures could earn this guy a spot in some constructed lists number nine we've got conclave naturalist a disenchant on a 4-4 body for five i'm not sure if any decks need this but i think a deck like tron does enjoy having uh, different things that it can flicker in and out that mostly use colorless mana and i could see this being a problematic recursion it's a big body and uh, I think there have been cards along those lines that have seen play uh, that usually have an activated ability on top of it. So it would not be surprised if this sees play. Uh, Sanctum Spirit. I'm actually less high on this card than I was when I first added it to the list. Already I'd put it lower. Uh, but Lifelink. Discard a historic card to give it indestructible until end of turn. I mean, the Lifelink is nice uh, as far as getting some life back but against the most aggressive strategies by the time this is getting out it may just be too late and the discarding a historic card in this format pretty much going to be artifacts so i don't know i'm not sure it is a potentially indestructible lifelink murder machine that will just keep chipping away turn after turn and be very difficult to remove however I mean, Popper does have some ways to kill it. And things like Edict effects, Defile, things that give minus X, minus X. So this is probably not as, as indestructible as it would really need to be to be worthwhile. Just kind of reminded me a little bit about Blinking Spirit, which is a card that I enjoy. And I think that's how it made it that high up the list. Uh, now we're really getting into it here. Everflowing Chalice, Multi-Kicker 2. It has a charge counter for each time it was kicked. So it's a zero casting cost card. If Tron is going to go ahead and say sink 10 mana into this, it's immediately going to get back 5, and that is quite a value. Sorry for the break there, guys. I just had a customer pop in and pick up some stuff to finish off his commander deck. So Everflowing Chalice, I think, is going to be a card that people look to abuse either through proliferating and adding additional counters. We could see some type of twiddle situation here to power out some perhaps uncounterable X spells and uh, overall it's just an exciting card to be able to play with you can tinker this out or you can trinket mage it out as well and i mean the cards it's it's got some real potential bone picker 
is a fun tool for a mono black, a 3-2 flying death touch for one black mana in most situations. Uh, if it costs three less if a creature died this turn is something that black is super, super comfortable doing. And this is, I mean, it's not quite a black delver, but it's potentially pretty close. I mean, this is really an interesting card for mono black decks getting across every turn in the air. Uh, it's one of the things that the deck kind of struggled with a little bit. You know, you were playing like a three mana Liliana's Spectre perhaps, or, you know, something that wasn't hitting for three, cost too much mana, whereas now you've got that super inexpensive threat that can just start turning sideways. Probably like on power level of Somber Hoverguard, let's say. It's not quite a Delver, but it is a 3-2 for one mana once it works, and the Death Touch is no small thing. Crusader of Audric. This is a pretty cool card. I mean, it's pretty big, right? Three mana for at least a 1-1, one, one, and because uh, it counts itself. And if you're going wide, making tokens, there's there's some potential here. I think this could be a deck, the centerpiece of a token-style strategy, and uh, it can get outside of bolt range very, very quickly. So I think people will have fun playing with this card as well. Tough to say how good it'll be, but I'm sure people will give it the good old college try. Cast Down. This is some premium removal. Destroy target non-legendary creature. And there's really not that many legendary creatures to speak of here. This is a two-mana shotgun blast to any creature in the format for the most part and uh, the type of thing that black will be happy to sleeve up i think black does have a ton of good options already but this competes with the best of them and is an exciting new printing for both mono black strategies and something like a black blue control where they've got a single black in the casting cost and are, are happy to just be killing creatures as part of the way their their deck progresses its game plan and my favorite card being downshifted here is a braid. This is a card that I've actually had a tough time keeping in stock uh, as Hour of Devastation, or yeah, it's Hour of Devastation has been out of people's minds for a while. I don't see a ton of the card kicking around, and anytime it's in someone's binder, I typically throw too much at it just to make sure that it ends up in the inventory as it is always needed by tournament players in Legacy and now in Popper. A 3 damage to a creature or destroy an artifact for 2 mana is a tremendous value and great utility. And I think this card is going to be seeing a ton of play in sideboards for Popper as it uh, is now a common. This was one of the more in-demand uncommons out there, so it'll actually help tournament players get easy access to this card and a uh, whole new bunch of demand from the popper players out there so oh this is not number one. Oh, it's a good thing i checked this is the number one mirror retriever this card do you guys even understand how crazy it is to have combo decks in popper so most popper decks are aggro there's a handful of control strategies most notably tron and then there's some fringe combo decks i mean this doesn't feel particularly fringe to me mirror retriever i have played against in vintage before with cost reducers where they would actually uh, either back then, I think they just had cost reducers to cycle mirror retrievers to each other and then create an infinitely large arc bound ravager. So they just had like Ethereum sculptor or something. Uh, I mean, we can do that. We can make it happen. You've got Ashnod's altar, you have disciple of the vault and you can just be making these guys, jump in and out of the graveyard and potentially have a combo finish it's not necessarily going to be an entirely combo deck either it could just be like an extra layer on top of an already existing strategy that gives them the ability to just absolutely take somebody out say on turn three so turn three combo decks are a rarity you could go faster with things like lotus petal though that is a difficult thing to make happen but it is within the realm of possibilities so that should be Yes, that is the final card for Double Masters. I think this is the most exciting one. I also like a braid a lot, but this one opens up new archetypes as a possibility, and we'll see how long it sticks around. Will it be too good? Will it get banned? Let me know what you think in the comments, but I am excited to see where Mirror Retriever takes us. Thanks for watching.